the Seahawks won the coin toss and deferred, so the Cardinals will get the ball on offense. Stephen Hauska getting ready to boot it. John Skelton, who started the opening week when Russell Wilson lost to the Cardinals and John Skelton, Arizona. Kevin Cobb finished that game. Well, this will be the first start for John Skelton here in Seattle. Unbelievably tough venue to play in with the crowd noise. William Powell from the goal line. And gets up across the 20 yard line short of the 25 where that offense takes over. At one time, he was 6-0 as a starter, 1-4 in his last five starts at quarterback. And Larry Fitzgerald told us that, look, the optimism of having John Skelton back has, has put a good vibe over this football team. It starts, though, with Beanie Wells. They've got to get the running back going. If not him, somebody else. And very curious to see how those two rookie offensive tackles hold up against those rocket-fueled speed rushers of the Seattle Seahawks. Skelton to throw on first down and hauled in by Andre Roberts. They welcome him back. That's his 51st catch of the year and a good option coming off of a sore ankle and going up against that Seattle defense. Allen Branch, the old Arizona Cardinal, he, he's going to want to have a big game today for Seattle up front. You know, they have not been great at shutting down the run over the last several games. Good young linebacking core. Now the big question is the secondary with Brandon Browner being down with suspension. Richard Sherman, who has appealed his potential suspension. Walter Thurman, Mike Crosshairs will be on him today for four quarters to see how he does. Second and one. Skelton looking and completing. Again, it's Andre Roberts all the way into Seattle territory down inside the 45-yard line. And this is where they need Andre Roberts. As you said, he's been out with an ankle injury. He is just going to run a shallow crossing route. And this is really where he's best. I mean, he reads some of the off-zone coverage. They have Larry Fitzgerald threatening out to the flank. Opens up a nice window over the middle of the field for Andre Roberts. Good to have him back. 24-yard gain to the 45 of the Seahawks. Beanie Wells checks in at running back. Opening drive for the Cardinals. Skelton, two out of two. Michael Floyd runs into the backfield, but Wells gets the carry. Beanie Wells, who comes in averaging just two and a half yards a carry. He's only played. This is just the sixth game this year. Chris, it's obvious to see why this offense has been, at least to me, so dysfunctional. I mean, their, their run game has been crippled with injury, not only Beanie Wells, but Ryan Williams earlier in the year. And you look at those numbers for, for Beanie Wells. This guy who had over 1,000 yards rushing last year and 10 touchdowns. And when you don't have a running game cranked up, you got a young offensive line, you need a quarterback that can really cover up your mistakes and define the X's and O's. Since they lost Kevin Cobb earlier in the year, they haven't had that. Setting up the screen to LaRock Stevens Howling tries to make an inside move short of the first down. Brandon Meebane on the stop. You mentioned Brandon Browner begins serving the first of a four-game suspension. Seahawks will have him should they make the playoffs and right now they're in position to do that given their record as a wild card. Richard Sherman as Walter Thurman takes Browner's spot is on the other side and may have his appeal pushed back from next Friday. On third down and two. Skelton's throw to Fitzgerald. Battle for him, knocked away. It looks like Bobby Wagner has the football. And Wagner knocked down inside the 25 of Arizona. There is a flag down over on the Arizona side of the field. After the interception and during the return tripping of the passing team, that 10 yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. First down, Seattle. 
Only the second interception by a linebacker this year. Larry Fitzgerald, he's in position to get the first down. Not a real accurate throw. You saw Thurman got his hand on it. Then K.J. Wright ripped it out. Right here, you'll see K.J. Wright pull at it. It goes down. Thurman hits it with his left hand, bounces right into the to the bread basket for Bobby Wagner who takes it down inside the 14 yard line the rookie the wow. team's leading tackler more than a hundred this season his second interception to go along with three sacks he's done an excellent job and after the pick return and penalty now they're at the Arizona 14 yard line as Carl Jeffers and our officiating crew sorts things out and and really that's what Seattle needs is they're going to go on this game today in the playoff run Chris, they got to force more takeaways. They've only had one in the last two games coming into today. Big time start for them on defense. And what a turn of events right. for the Cardinals who are moving the football. And now Seattle in scoring position is Marshawn Lynch carries. And we talked a little bit about Lynch. On his way to 1,200 yards, comes in averaging at 4.6. And on that. Passing attack, Golden Tate is having a career year for the rookie quarterback, Russell Wilson. And Sidney Rice is no slouch himself. He has really gotten it cranked up since the Detroit game. You look at him up front, no James Carpenter today, so John Moffat will move over to right guard, Paul McQuiston to the left guard position. Second down, eight. Russell Wilson has it, a little bit of an option, and he works his way down to the six-yard line before linebacker Sam Acho makes the stop. Darnell Dockett, as part of the punishment last week, a team punishment to go with a fine, not starting, but active to play in this game, so David Carter gets the start up front. Yeah, we will see a lot of Darnell Dockett. Calais Campbell back in the lineup is huge. Darrell Washington, to me, right up there is one of the top inside linebackers in the pro game, and, and I'm looking forward to the matchup with Patrick Peterson, who has really improved since the week one matchup against Seattle as a cover man. Watching him try to match up on Sidney Rice today will be fun. Four wide receivers on third down and two. Russell Wilson hesitates and runs right in to the defender, Quentin Groves, who came from the linebacker spot and sacks Russell Wilson. And a big defensive stop. That Cardinal defense has been carrying the load all season long, and they do it again here. And this is a busted protection. I mean, everybody turns to the left, and Quinton Groves comes unblocked. Russell Wilson had no idea he was there. Russell wanted to unload it to the left. His receiver was covered up, and it was too late for him by the time he saw Quinton Groves. Those big hands came in handy for Russell Wilson being able to secure the football and not cough it up. 31-yard field goal try for Stephen Hauschka. Seattle strikes first after the Bobby Wagner interception and return. Seattle working for its eighth win with a 3 0 lead. Darnell Dockett, since 2007, has more sacks from the defensive tackle spot than any other player, but because of team disciplinary reasons, not starting today. Well, they're going to need him today. You mentioned the sack numbers. He's actually better against the run game, and we all know. Marshawn Lynch with the Seattle Seahawks love to run between the tackles. Darnell Dockett, before it's all said and done, will have to put his imprint on this football game. House going to kick off for the second time. And again, it's William Powell from the goal line. Excellent special teams play. Camp Chancellor making the play. Arizona's defense hitting the rookie quarterback like he has not been hit this season. Seahawks have a 3-0 lead. Back here in Seattle, Larry Fitzgerald mentioning to Tim and I, hands down, this is the most difficult atmosphere to play in anywhere. Even in the huddle, you can't hear the guy next to you. Patrick Peterson is in on offense. The throw goes to Patrick Peterson, who gets up the sideline. Kind of a nifty move. The talented cornerback who has not had a punt return for a touchdown this year, but at four last year, so he's got breakaway speed. Uh, and if, if you've lost eight games in a row, what do you have to lose? And put him in there at slot receiver. Guy was a great running back growing up. Uh, clearly, he's got skills when he gets the ball in his hands. That was easy for Skelton. Had it matched up on Chris Clemens out on the, on the edge. That's his second catch of the season and second down for the Cardinals who were moving the ball on 
until the interception by Skelton. William Powell moves in and carries the football. Let's check in for a game break with Patrick O'Neill. All right, Chris, it's the Giants and the Saints, Meadowlands, Eli Manning back to pass, and oh no, he's picked off. Elbert Max, 73 yards, pick six. The Saints and certainly would have to win out and get some help for any chance in the playoffs. Well, that start will help things. Seven nothing over the Giants. Back to Chris and Tim. Thank you, Patrick. Well, I think this is going to be on Brandon Meebank. After the play, personal foul, number 92, defense for unnecessary action after the play was over. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Seattle fans don't like the call. They have the runner stopped, but it's a 15-yard tack-on penalty after the run, so a 19-yard game. And you see him right there, and, and Jeff King is trying to block him, and after the, the ball is well by him, Brandon Meebane reaches into the face pass of Jeff King and just rips him to the ground. Easy one for the umpire to see. Moves the ball all the way up to the 45-yard line. I'll tell you, penalties have crushed the Seattle team many, many times this year. On first and 10, Cardinals. Laurent Stevens howling. Met right at the 45. Cam Chancellor up from his safety spot. This Cardinal offense, you talk about an eight-game skid. They haven't scored more than 19 points in any one game during that stretch. And their defense coming in ranks seventh in the NFL. So if their offense can produce some points, if Ken Wisenhunt can get some production out of his quarterback slash running game, maybe they snap the skid. Skelton from the pocket for Fitzgerald, who goes high in the air, and it's incomplete. Walter Thurman was covering. That's the area that would have been where Brandon Browner would have lined up. Look at this offense and, and what they've done here in, in 2012. First down, had a lot of problems really all year getting any success. You see their ranking out of 32 teams on, on second down, and now the third down is the absolute crusher. This team has been in third and long this season, Chris, over 100 times, by far the most in the NFL. Now it's third and nine and noisy. And this is where these pass rushers tee you up off the edge. Blitz is coming. Skelton floats it in the air and incomplete. Bobby Wagner put the pressure on. He's the one who had the interception to kill the last drive. Bobby Wagner and K.J. Wright coming up the middle and Chris Clemens coming off the edge. And you're going to see it coming right into your face. And there's Bobby Wagner who starts it. Chris Clemens finishes it. K.J. Wright's part of it. Leon Washington back to return Dave Zastadil's punt. Averaging nearly 47 yards of boot. And gets another kick into the direction Washington, who is tackled right across the 15-yard line of Seattle. in great field position the first time after the interception and picked up a field goal, but the 42-yard punt pins him back in a hole. Russell Wilson, third-round pick out of Wisconsin, leads the offense in Seattle in a moment. Along with Tim Rye, Chris Myers, glad you're with us from Seattle on a first down and 10 from the Seattle 15-yard line, already leading 3-0. Green 80! Marshawn Lynch, the back for Russell Wilson. Green 80! Set to throw and does as Anthony McCoy, the tight end, who puts a move on. Here comes a flag as he goes across the 30-yard line. Russell Wilson, his last four games, nine touchdowns, no interceptions. Pass interference. Number 81, offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Uh, this is on Darrell Washington. As Darrell Washington's trying to get over in coverage, you'll see Golden Tate flash right from the bottom of your screen, right there, balls in the air, and collide with Darrell Washington. And that ends up being the offensive pass interference call. It negates what would have been a first down. No contact, Chris, while the ball's in the air. I mean, if you get there before the ball is thrown, it's okay. But once the ball's in the air, you cannot collide and or screen or block a defender. So now the Seahawks are backed up at their own seven-yard line on first down 17. Marshawn Lynch at the bottom of your screen splits out as a wide receiver. 
Russell Wilson from the pocket running around his own end zone. There's a flag down as he goes out of bounds near the 10 yard line. Yeah, this one will be, I believe, an offside. Offside, number 54 defense, five yard penalty, first down. That's on Quentin Groves, who had the sack earlier that forced a field goal. And you saw the legs of Russell Wilson nearly 300 yards rushing this season. And he ran the Bears ragged in an overtime win in Chicago last Sunday. And he just extends so many plays. Where does he improve the most? Well, I'll tell you, in the, in really the critical situation, third down, the ability to move the chains and, and have some ball control, and then more importantly, down in the red zone, he has improved leaps and bounds over the last seven or eight games. Green AD. Green. So on first and 12 from the 13, they set up the screen, but it's batted away. Harris Lennon got his hands up on the football. Let's get a game break. Check in with Patrick O'Neill. Thank you, Chris. We showed you the Saints pick six ensuing kickoff. Took about 10 seconds for the Giants to answer. The rookie, David Wilson, out of Bot Tech, 97-yard touchdown. Hey, that kickoff return in the NFL, pretty exciting. And, oh, the Saints just turned it over on a fumble. 7-7 in the first, Chris and Tim. And important in the NFC East because the Redskins and Cowboys both won today on late field goals. That divisional race is heating up. On second down, it's Marshawn Lynch with nowhere to go. That swarming Cardinal defense led again by Harris Lennon. Forcing now a third down will test the improvement of Russell Wilson. And, and they get after it now. Ray Horton has got these guys buzzing around. It's snap to whistle. And watch Calais Campbell here. You're going to have pressure by Ocho, but Calais Campbell gets out and really sets the edge. Right there on Russell Okung, forces the ball right there to cut back inside. And Paris Lennon's waiting for it. That was perfect. So now Robert Turbin checks in at running back. The rookie from Utah State is an excellent receiver on third down and 11. Tell you, if you're going to pressure, you better send fast guys after Russell Wilson that can track him down. The Cardinals blitz more than any team in the league, and here they come. He's got time, floats it, and completes for a first down across the 30. Sidney Rice. Watch Sidney Rice just put his foot in the ground, go across the middle of the field, man coverage, and Russell Wilson, the offensive line held up, stood right in the well and delivered from the pocket. That was nice. Here comes Darnell Dockett checking into the game for the first time on that Cardinal defense and throwing from the pocket. 5'10 and 5'8 is the official size of Russell Wilson. He was able to complete that on a third down and long for a first down. After the gain of 17, Russell Wilson has it. And that's time. He'll run for positive yardage and slide across the 35-yard line. Now Darnell Dockett in the game, as you said. He's lined up there on Breno Giacomini. And I'll tell you what, you, you go back and I watched the first game week one against these two. Darnell Dockett was unbelievably disruptive in that matchup. From the, there by Giacomini, excuse me. Sorry, Tim, 35-yard line after a pickup of four on the run by Russell Wilson. Marshawn Lynch carries and has a first down. All the way up to the 45 of the Seahawks. And two really, really good blocks to the right side of the offensive line. You're going to see Michael Robinson get the kick out and then watch Giacomini, the right tackle, get up on Darrell Washington and just widen him. That opens up the running lane for Marshawn Lynch. Good job, Paris Lennon is, is there. That would have been a big pop. In a string, Lynch did a four straight games with 100 yards in each, but the last two, not so much. After a pickup of 10 on first down, he gets it and is knocked down after maybe a yard or two. Cardinal defense third best against the run. 
in the National Football League coming into this game. Their numbers are outstanding with the exception of the, the run defense where they're giving up over four yards a carry. And now they see 31 runs a game because they can't score offensively. And there's Ray Horton right there, the defensive coordinator. He understands that. But where you can get Arizona is if you can achieve run success, it really opens it up for the play action. And where they have struggled this year, it's been trying to defend the play pass. Ray Horton from Tacoma. And of course, college football at Washington. Screen center. That's Anthony McCoy, the tight end. Put that ball away. All the way down to the 31 of Arizona. A 22-yard catch and carry. Watch McCoy here to the right. He's going to hold like he's blocking just for a second. And then he's going to peel and get out really in a one-man screen with Breno Giacomini out in front of him. And then is able to pick up the extra yards. A lot of open space on the field. Paris Leonard is the injured player. Cardinals are tending to him. 3.13 to go in the opening quarter. Seahawks lead 3-0. Stuart Bradley checks in for the injured Paris Lennon on first and 10 from the Arizona 32. Eighth play of the drive, Robert Turbin the back for Russell Wilson. And Russell Wilson has it and puts one towards the right side, tipped away at the last moment. Intended for Robert Turbin. Reggie Walker on the coverage. And that's outstanding awareness by Reggie Walker. It's been a few games since Seattle has dialed up this play with Robert Turbin coming out of the backfield and they run the wheel route which means he's basically an out and up and Reggie Walker in perfect position the ball a little under thrown or that would have been a touchdown but Reggie Walker able to lay out and get his hands on it and knock it down at the last second. Marshawn Lynch checks back in Wilson two out of four so far. Yes, lady. To Michael Robinson, the fullback, who has another Seattle first down. Former Pro Bowler, who is not just a blocker. Oh, he's much better than that. I mean, we had him in Miami a couple of weeks ago where he had a big touchdown. He doesn't get a lot of carries, but his plays now, especially in the passing game, and as a lead blocker for Marshawn Lynch. He's a huge contributor. You know, at fullback in this system, you got to see it just like a tailback in, in terms of your vision and, and making the reads. He's very, very good at it. From the 20-yard line, we have a timeout. The Cardinals first, are calling. First timeout, Arizona. Ken Wisenhut will have two timeouts remaining here in the first half. Seattle has the lead in the football. 2.34 to go here in the opening quarter. You know, the Bears lost earlier today, a win by Seattle. They own the tiebreaker with Chicago and others would leapfrog them in the wild card. They still have a shot at the NFC West Division title as well. 49ers tied at the moment with Miami in the second quarter. As Marshawn Lynch carries. All the way down to the five-yard line. There's a flag down. One in the end zone, one at the two-yard line. After the play was over, unnecessary roughness, number 68 of the offense, illegally contacting a defender. The result of the play was a first down, so after enforcement, it'll be first and ten. Right on Giacomini called for the violation. Now, this is what they call a little gun run. Shotgun run. He's going to turn and hand it to Marshawn Lynch, who just keeps it front side. I mean, you see Quentin Groves, who was playing the zone read and took the bait on Russell Wilson. And then as he's going down, Giacomini comes in late. And not the first time he has been flagged for trying to clean up the pile around Marshawn Lynch this year. And Lynch carries. Oh, Russell Wilson out there blocking for him. Can you believe this? It's a touchdown. <laughs> A 20-yard touchdown run. 
Marshawn Lynch and leading the way, his quarterback. And here's the beauty of Daryl Bevel. That's the same play, just to the other side. He is a play repeater. It worked to the right. Let's see if it'll work to the left. Marshawn Lynch, not known as a guy who bounces it out to the outside. Still got a lot of juice in those legs and picks up some nice screen interference by his quarterback, Russell Wilson. Impressive. Yeah, we'll call that screen interference a nice way of saying Yeah. He's trying to block. Trying to block. Extra point after the 20-yard run. That's now a 10-0 hometown Seattle advantage. An 85-yard drive capped off by Marshawn Lynch's seventh touchdown run of the year. Marshawn Lynch and Russell Wilson hoping to lead the Seahawks back into the postseason. These are the results from today, including the Washington and Dallas and Minnesota victories. But you see the Bears have lost. Seattle owns the head-to-head -head tiebreaker with the Bears, with the Minnesota Vikings as well. How about the Rams at 6-6-1? Six, six, what a job Jeff Fisher has done. I mean, you think about that football team and what they've been able to achieve over the last couple of weeks. Jeff Fisher, a big part of it with his coaching style. Just out coaching the opponent. I saw it last week in San Francisco. You figure one team from the NFC East. And of course Atlanta, even though they lost today in good position, but the Seahawks could also they get a shot at the 49ers again here in Seattle. It's going to be so much fun to watch the NFC come down in terms of this playoff race. So much more intrigue, in my opinion, versus what the AFC has to offer. William Powell for the third time today, but this time watches it sail through. Cardinals facing an avalanche here, trailing 10 0. They'll get the football. We'll see what John Skelton can do against Pete Carroll's defense in just a moment. Tim Ryan, Chris Myers in Seattle, Marshawn Lynch with six rushes, 50 yards already, and a touchdown. His energy, you know, he loves those Skittles that little colored candy and during the game he keeps them see they got the antacids the eye care and there are that's the secret formula that keeps Marshawn Lynch rolling like the beast he is and we'll be watching when he goes for those if he needs them in this game I'll call that last touchdown a sugar rush <laughs> he there was an interesting SI feature awesome. article on him recently and, and that beast mode is is he said it's not just a nickname it's a lifestyle when you look at what he's done this year, number two rusher in the NFL, you go back to last year, last November, he's the number one rusher in terms of rushing yards and his production, and it's really not even close. And you said no knock on him, but Russell Wilson has taken over this team at the quarterback position. He's the star runner. Meanwhile, Skelton needs to rally the visiting Cardinals, where it's going to get ugly. Throws an ugly pass. Michael Floyd was in the neighborhood. You know, I, I asked Skelton when he sat out. Remember, he was injured in the opener. Then he was benched. So this is his third go-round as a starter. What he saw when he sat out when Ryan Lindley, the rookie, was in and didn't do any better. And he said, well, I realize there were a lot of plays that could be made. Well, and it's a lot easier sitting and seeing it from the bench and in the film room when, when the action's really flying in your face for real. Listen, he's got a great opportunity here in the next four games to prove He's more than a backup in pro football. Beanie Wells, it'll be third down. Let's check in with Patrick O'Neill for another game break. All right, Chris, let's tell you what happened here with the Giants after that Saints fumble. Well, Eli Manning to Martellus Bennett for the touchdown. Bennett's fifth of the year. 14-7, G-Men, and they have the ball. Also, let's update you on the NFC West leading 49ers. Uh, that's a field goal by David Akers to tie up the game with the Dolphins at three. Chris and Tim, back to you. Thanks, Patrick, on third and nine. Pressure on Skelton, pass incomplete for Fitzgerald. At six foot six, he stayed in that pocket but couldn't deliver the throw. Well, his feet, he just wasn't on balance trying to deliver the throw. And I think he saw Richard Sherman climbing from around Larry Fitzgerald at the last minute. And it looked like he just threw it in the dirt. I mean, in the, in the turf. Skelton never had his feet set to deliver that ball with accuracy and velocity. Zaps to the punt for Leon Washington. It rained earlier in the day. Not raining now. Temperature in the low 40s. Gets the kick away. No fair catch. And 
Washington brought down in a hurry by Justin Bethel. Excellent special teams play. A 52-yard punt and no return. On January 4th, one of the best bowl games of the year. It's on Fox and Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Manziel leads ninth-ranked Texas A&M against the 11th-ranked Oklahoma Sooners. It's the AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic January 4th, and you'll see it on Fox. Both Larry Fitzgerald and Russell Wilson texted Johnny Manziel to congratulate him on winning the Heisman Classic. Wilson falls forward at the 29-yard line. Harris Lennon back in with that nagging ankle injury that forced him out. He's trying to tough it out for Ray Horton on defense. And he's a big part of their run defense for sure. Let's look for that play action, the play pass to get cranked up now for the Seattle Seahawks. Now that they have identified that they can run the ball and they've made Arizona respect their run game. For the play action pass to be a staple here. Moving forward. And keeps. Wide open is McCord. Anthony McCord. All the way inside the five yard line. First and goal, Seahawks. Well, here it is the play pass. McCoy's coming off right from the end of the line of scrimmage. And Darrell Washington and William Gay both broke off their coverage. Clearly a bust. William Gay is able to get back in it and tackle him before he gets the, gets the touchdown. And what a quarter it's been for the playoff hopeful Seahawks. They lead 10-0 and are trying to get more. First and goal from the four-yard line after a 67-yard pass play to Anthony McCoy. Marshawn Lynch. Can he get another touchdown? Really good patience by Marshawn Lynch. It's actually defended pretty well, and he sees William Gay, who's trying to force it back inside. And is able to shake him down. David Carter coming over the top. And, and Marshawn Lynch just isn't going to be denied. And look at the patience and the vision. As he gets outside now. He's going to read William Gay who pops up right there. He cuts it inside. And got what he needed. And this Seahawks team unbelievably scary right now. In the level of play by them. And especially at home where as you know they are undefeated. And trying to keep it that way. I wonder if Marshawn Lynch will be heading over to the Skittles. It is 17 nothing Seattle. In the distance, Mount Rainier and Marshawn Lynch. Two rushing touchdowns today. First time this season he's done that in one game, but working on a career best year in terms of rushing yardage. He's about 15 yards away from that mark. And you see the key play was the Anthony McCoy play. And, and no doubt, Arizona defensively, they busted their coverage. They all took the bait. Went up on the teaser route on Zach Miller. McCoy wide open behind him. William Powell with a chance on the return. And gets good yardage. Best return of the day. And he's been busy getting it out to the 25-yard line. Tomorrow on Fox, live on stage. One place to see country's biggest stars, the American Country Awards. Your votes select the winners. Trace Atkins and Kristen Chenoweth are the host. Live performances from all the stars. The American Country Awards live tomorrow, 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Fox. They pack them in and shout it out, no matter what the weather conditions are. William Powell with a nice cut to make something out of nothing and gets out across the 34-yard line. William Powell doing it all by himself. Uh, he was absolutely stopped. There was nowhere to go at the line of scrimmage. Seattle, the whole right side of their defense, and they're playing a, 
an eight-man front. They have it stopped, but the Arizona Cardinals, they, they stay alive with their blockers. Guys continue to block and end up getting a little crease for William Powell, as you said, something out of nothing. A nine-yard gain. They go right to the line. Nowhere to go for Skelton. He gets the first down anyway. Awkward-looking play that produces for the Cardinals, who have been looking awkward the last eight games. How wild is that? When you look at the Arizona Cardinals, that's their first third-down completion in their last 19 tries going Con back. Conversion. Yeah, uh, conversion, excuse me, going back to the, to the game against the Jets, and it comes on a busted play where William Powell didn't know what he was doing. William Powell again. Helmet comes flying off. In the first quarter, as the score would indicate, lopsided in favor of the hometown Seahawks. They have dominated. Look at those big plays, Tim. Well, and that's another area where Russell Wilson has, has really improved. We talked about the third down. We talked about the red zone. The explosive plays of 20-plus have cranked up over the last several games. On second and eight, a Rod Stevens howling in the slot. Skelton goes underneath and completes Rob Hausler, the tight end, who the Cardinals would like to get to more in this game. Create some opportunities. And I, I think if you just looked at that play and saw how fast John Skelton got it out with the short underneath passing game, that's how they have to survive today. That ball came out in about 2.1 seconds. And you're right, the tight ends have to get the ball, Chris. You look at Seattle, the tight ends have to have an impact in this game for Arizona. No touchdowns on the year for the Arizona Cardinals tight end position. Here comes a flag on third and five. Carl Sheffers, our referee, already three Seahawk penalties. Neutral zone infraction, number 92, defense. His movement into the neutral zone caused a reaction by the offense. That five-yard penalty will result in a first down. That is the correct call, the second on Meebane already in this game. It'll give the Cardinals a first down. And both of the penalties on Brandon Meebane, who is playing outstanding up front for the Seattle Seahawks have cost his team first down. I mean, he had the big one, the personal foul earlier. We ripped Jeff King to the ground by his face mask. Equal to first down, as did the that one there. As he was in the neutral zone. And we're going to get a timeout Cardinals. They will have one remaining. Seattle dominating, but Arizona has the football and is on the move here in Seattle. After the Cardinal timeout, no catches yet for Larry Fitzgerald. Skelton is trying to get him the football. He came in with 56 and only four touchdowns. From the 46 of Arizona, pressure coming and pass complete right at midfield to Hausler. Earlier this week, Todd Heath was released by the Arizona Cardinals, never quite panned out, but how's there a guy behind Jeff King as they go without a huddle? As you said, they want to get the ball to him. They think they can in this game. Well, he's a matchup problem now. He, he can really run, and he's number three in, in receptions for the Arizona Cardinals. He's a big part of what they do. And second and four, ball is loose, and it looks like the Seahawks are all over it. Chris Clemens knocking it out, and Seattle has a takeaway. Their second of this game. Well, he's coming off the edge to, to the right here. Now watch him just reach out and swipe the ball as Skelton pulls it back. Clearly a fumble. Now John Skelton can't get on it. Chris Clemens does. Clearly recovers the ball, then Skelton pulls it away from him. That's what these pass rushers do. And you got a rookie, Nate Potter, out there trying to block one of the better edge rushers in the program and, and, and Chris Clemens that's a mismatch he forces the fumble he gets the sack and gets the football ninth sack of the season for Clemens and the Seahawks have had a sack at every game this year that is the trifecta sack force fumble fumble recovery big production points 
on the production sheet for Chris Clemens. Russell Wilson sets up on first down to throw, and Harry Rose nearly had a pick. Pass thrown for Zach Miller. Rhodes coming off a two interception game against the Jets is return to New York. Well, he had a great game against the Jets last week and actually this Cardinal team 18 interceptions coming into this game tied for second in the NFL overall in that department 12 in the last six games which is a real testament to them and, and really how hard they play despite an eight game losing Bender on second down Robert Turbin gets inside the 40 yard line down to the 39 yard line fourth round draft pick from Utah State and they'll use him to give Marshawn Lynch rest time as they steamroll towards the playoffs. They've been really happy with Robert Turbin. He only sees five or six touches a game. But when he does he makes the most of them. He really I think this guy's got a big future here with the Seahawks. Leon Washington checks it at running back on third and five. Sidney Rice, bottom of your screen. Pressure coming. And Ryan Russell Wilson has a Rice opportunity that he can't connect on. It'll be fourth down. It's amazing how Russell Wilson gets out of the most difficult situations. Now the beauty of Russell Wilson and talking to him Chris and, and, and I asked him I said why are you so good under pressure because my mindset changes when I'm under pressure I'd like to apply the pressure and we've seen I mean this is our sixth game we've done with the Seattle Seahawks we see it week after week when things break down that guy steps his game up with his legs and, and puts a lot of pressure on defenses trying to cover those scrambling wide receivers and Patrick Peterson hoping to put pressure on the special teams here in Seattle, but Ryan is not going to give much of a chance. Fair catch called for. And inside the 10 yard line, Cardinals defense gets a stop after the fumble by Skelton. Arizona will take over on offense, trailing 17 up. Ken Wisenhunt said we're close, meaning winning a game. They lost 7 6 last week, they've lost 8 straight. His quarterback has thrown an interception and lost a fumble. And now from the nine yard line on first and ten. They got to start moving him around Chris. He is a sitting duck standing at the midline behind the offensive line. A handoff to William Powell. He gets up across the 11. There's a flag down back at the two yard line. Patrick Peterson had come back in on that play on offense for the Cardinals. Ball start number 71 offense. Five yard penalty measure got the distance for the goal. First down. That's on Darren College, the former Packer who is from North Pole, Alaska. And give that one to the 12th man here in Seattle and their impact on the game. You know, Arizona all week long worked with the silent count and they had the music blaring up in practice. They never turned it off. It's not even close to being the same. This is the false start capital of the world. Skelton from his own end zone, and it's intercepted. There goes Richard Sherman. That is a touchdown. That is just a bad decision by John Skelton to throw that football. You're going to see Richard Sherman, who is going to really play the back shoulder fade. You got Earl Thomas undercutting it underneath the form of double coverage. John Skelton never saw it. I mean, he gives Larry Fitzgerald a chance, tried to throw it to his back shoulder. Richard Sherman was all over it. That's the history of Richard Sherman as a wide receiver. He knew it was coming. He understands route concepts perfect. The extra point, it's one thing to target Larry Fitzgerald it's another thing to force the ball as Richard Sherman with his fifth interception of the season takes it into the end zone it's 24 to the Seahawks
It's an avalanche when you come into Seattle and the Seahawks get on a roll. 19-yard interception return by Richard Sherman, who had four interceptions last year as a rookie. He took over when Walter Thurman was injured. Thurman is now playing for the suspended Brandon Browner at the other corner as Hauschka kicks off to the Rod Stevens howling. And knocked down short of the 17-yard line. Tim Ryan and Chris Myers, glad you're with us for the NFL on Fox. And Seattle on a roll in excellent shape, as we said at the top. Their rookie quarterback, Russell Wilson, the running of Marshawn Lynch to march right into the playoffs. Well, they have dominated this football game. That's obvious in watching it. And I think areas that we talked about them needing to improve defensively, getting the takeaways, you just see that touchdown by Richard Sherman. And as I said, Richard started at Stanford as a wide receiver. He understands it and how to kind of bait quarterbacks and, and understanding what the wide receiver routes are. With this 24-point lead, they're going to lay all the traps down for John Skelton, I promise you. And the support of the 12th man as Stevens Howling carries. There's some saying, hey, now, why is Richard Sherman playing? I thought he was suspended by the league. Well, he's appealing that four-game suspension, if you missed what we mentioned at the top of the broadcast. And that's supposed to be December 14th. The word here in Seattle is that may be delayed even further. And with Browner already starting this, the first of his four game, Browner would be back for the postseason if the Seahawks indeed get in. And, and really a great benefit to Seattle with the staggered suspensions. And it looks like Richard Ornberger, the center who's out there for Lyle Sendeline, the starting center who's been on injured reserve, is dealing with an injury right now as he gets rolled up on it, looks like. Right in the middle as they're trying to get Larod Stevens howling to the ground. But what a benefit really is as you look at Seattle and, and having Richard Sherman available to try to get to the playoffs and then if they do get there getting Brandon Browner back on the field for the playoffs. Scott Wettage number 66 would likely come in at center. And they just got him on the active roster Chris a free agent from northern Illinois. I can't imagine with this crowd noise in this venue with that pass rush and this this score with this the score defense, and one dimensional. Uh, this is going to be the toughest job Wedge has ever had. The Cardinals won this meeting to open the regular season in Arizona. It's a bit a different story here today. The ball is loose right at the 20 and you could expect an exchange from the center to the quarterback not getting a lot of work during the week and those factors you just mentioned Tim the noise defensive pressure Arizona looks like they didn't retain possession of the football and that's what happens I mean you got a center you see it right there and, and Scott Wettage who just gets brought up I can't imagine John Skelton's taking a lot of snaps from him. Oh, they, they were over there trying to work it on the sideline before he got in the game, and they couldn't get the center quarterback exchange fix. Like practice, like imperfect. Oh. Watch Seattle move their front around to confuse um, Wettage now. Skelton's throw. Incomplete for Hausler. It'll be fourth down. A lot of people questioned Ken Wisenhunt last week in New York when Ryan Lindley, the sixth round draft pick, was inept at quarterback and they had a chance to win the game. Why wouldn't you go with John Skelton then? They even waited during the week to name him the starter. If you don't have a quarterback, you just don't contend in the NFL. At least one that can get the job done. As Leon Washington grabs this on the run. And Leon Washington with a flag down. Here comes a second flag. It's all the way down to the 40. But that 19 yard return, they'd be coming back. In the series between the NFC West division rivals, it's been close. They've had close games, these Seahawks and Cardinals. 
Well, you go to the last two. Arizona's won the last two. Now, both of those were in Arizona. We did the game last year up here where the crowd had a major impact on Kevin Cobb in that win. There are multiple fouls by the return team during the return. Personal foul, blindside block, number 26. That penalty is declined. Illegal block in the back, number 41. That penalty is accepted. 10-yard penalty, first down. They'll accept on Byron Maxwell. Here's the peel block, uh, peel bo back block first, right there on Michael Robinson. And then here's the the second penalty on Byron Maxwell, right there. So it sets up the Seahawks at their own 34-yard line with a 24-0 advantage. Marshawn Lynch, they were checking him on the sideline after a second touchdown, has not been back in the game. Turban gets the carry. Eight and a half minutes to go here in the second quarter. That's the one of the only misreads I've seen from Russell Wilson on that read zone play. He's got to read the defensive end typically, and if he crashes down, you got to keep it, and, and you run it. And that time the defensive end crashed down, and he handed it anyway to Robert Turbin. The edge was wide open if Russell Wilson would have held it. Again, it's Turbin. It'll bring up third down. Certainly Seattle's defense has done its part, but Marshawn Lynch, seven carries, 54 yards, oh, two touchdowns. He is just a 228-pound beast that runs with that wide base. I mean, he, he's the number two rusher, Chris, in the NFL, but so many of his yards come after contact because he's so powerful in the lower body and, and plays with great balance. Third down and three for the Hawks on offense. Golden Tate. Trips into the backfield with Russell Wilson. And he throws and completes to Doug Baldwin. And excellent defense there forces a fourth down. John Ryan on to punt. Patrick Peterson, who again last year with four punt returns for touchdowns, has been unable to break one this year and gets help from Jay Feely as kicker. Yeah, who really lines him up and tells him how deep to get and where Jay Feely anticipates the punt's going to go. John Ryan, I don't think, will give him a big chance to return this. You'll see a lot of hang time and direction of punting. He fumbles the football. And the Seahawks bat it around, and there's the touchdown. Malcolm Smith in the end zone. with the directional punt really getting Patrick Peterson between the numbers the ball in the end zone touchdown between the numbers and the sideline and Patrick Peterson two defenders right in his face he takes his eyes off the football it comes out and then the ball is just bounced away of the Seattle Seahawks today perfect example there Jeremy Lane kicks it in between his legs pops it up into the air right in the arms of Malcolm Smith. Today is the Seahawks day. Seahawks showing us there are a lot of different ways to score. Interception return. Fumble punt return. Marshawn Lynch on the ground. And Hauschka's extra point. This will be the most points the Seahawks have scored this season. 31. Just look at this ball on the ground in between the legs of Jeremy Lane then pops it up and who's there to get it. Not the Arizona Cardinal Rashad Johnson Malcolm Smith right in his hands. And let's not underestimate the weapon that John Ryan has been all year long for the Seattle Seahawks. Well you frustrate a guy like Peterson when you kick it away from him and then when he does get a chance 
He's hammed up and can't handle it. Well, and you know Patrick Peterson's feeling the pressure, wanting to supplement the offense and the, the ineptability to score points. So he's trying hard, but uh, look, it was the hang time. It was the directional kick. Patrick should have just fair caught that. Everything going right for Seattle, so they could be cautious with their star runner, Marshawn Lynch, whose back is tightening up. He's questionable. Why bother using oh, him no, now? You just feed Robert Turbin the football now. Get, get your rookie quality reps in game. I'll tell you, the division still in, in the grasp of the Seattle Seahawks. I have a feeling that this playoff seating. One through six is going to change quite a bit between now and the new year. Well, and the Seattle Seahawks are sniffing it. So if this score holds up, they'll be the five seed moving up ahead of the Bears as the wild card because they beat them. They would both have eight and five records. So the 49ers have a 6 3 third quarter advantage in a battle at home with the Dolphins. And a tough road for them. Look, they got Miami today. That's not going to be easy as that game moves on. They got to go to New England and then they've got to come up here to Seattle. And Stephen Hauska for LaRod Stevens Howell. You can join the NFL in celebrating 50 years of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, the golden anniversary. You can visit Canton and join more than 10 million fans who've made the trip to the birthplace of the National Football League. Visit Pro Football. HOF.com for more and hope you go and enjoy a, a great scene for the entire family worth the trip for his Hall of Famers. There's Warren Moon, the broadcaster with Steve Rabel. The Arizona Cardinals with no Hall of Famers. The St. Louis Cardinals have Hall of Fame members. Larry Wilson among them. Pass is complete to Hausler. Before the game, you saw a couple of guys. Well, they would have been a pretty good pass and catch combination. One in the Hall of Fame, the other one will go there when he does decide to hang it up. Larry Fitzgerald again frustrated today. And I asked Larry, we both did. Do you ever feel like just saying something about how this season has gone? And he said it, not his style, but behind closed doors, he talks. Passes underneath and complete. Early to set. Near a first down. Jason Jones putting the hit on him. But back to Larry Fitzgerald. He said, look, he's got a lot of things to say behind closed doors and how this season has gone with the eight consecutive losses. And, and look at what's happened when he had Kurt Warner and a quarterback. They were pretty good. And then without Kurt Warner, he said he's not going public, though, with any of his complaints. He said he's got too many young guys that are watching how he handles this thing. Here comes a flag. Larry Fitzgerald, you know, we all have frustrations in our jobs, Ball but he... start, number 71, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. For the guy who's the star on the team, a six-time pro bowler, he's always above board, keeps his head up, whatever he handles, it's behind closed doors. He really is the kind of guy you'd want as your, your neighbor. If you had a daughter, you want him to marry your daughter. He's that kind of guy away from the game. And, of course, the way he plays the game, win or lose, his heart is always up. Yeah, he's got five catches in the last three and a half games. And in the area of Fitzgerald, but not catchable, and that seems to be the problem. And, and you know, we were talking to Ken Wisenhunt yesterday and said, well, where's the target? He goes, well, Kenny said, Larry's been targeted. He's been one of the most targeted wide receivers in pro football, and, and Coach Wisenhunt's right about that. But targeted with, with targeted Chris with low percentage throws and inaccurate throws from the quarterback. You can target him all you want. Unless you get it in his catch radius, he's not going to catch it. I mean, it's unbelievable. And he only has three drops this season, according to stats. But he's had three games, Larry Fitzgerald, with just one catch. Andre Roberts can't hold it. Richard Sherman on the coverage. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee and see what's going on with the 49ers. Well, the 49ers trying to stay ahead of Seattle. This is Frank Gore, one-yard touchdown run. They came up a muff punt by Miami. They take a 10-point lead, 13-3 at home in the Bay. Chris and Tim. Thanks, Kurt. 
Both the Cardinals and Seahawks still have games scheduled against the 49ers. Third and 15. Hausler, short of the first down. Seattle will host the 49ers the second of the last regular season game. 49ers will be playing at home against Arizona on the final regular season Sunday. And boy, that tie, look at what the Rams have done. You know, it's interesting. Seattle is not won yet in the division. If they win today, this would be their first in the NFC West, but still catchable, as you pointed out, if the 49ers should stumble. There's a flag. Ball start, number 56, offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. And if you can imagine, it, it, if somehow for Pete Carroll and his team, it, it does come down to the, the final game and who wins the division, you know, depending on what happens here with San Francisco down the stretch, the opportunity to host a home field game in the wild card round of the playoffs versus having to go on the road, huge. Seattle trying to go 6 0 this season at home as Leon Washington looks for room. And it's hit hard. <laughs> These are the games remaining, and even that for the Seahawks next week, that's a later starting indoor game in Toronto. So it's a 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Pacific kickoff. Well, and, and look, Buffalo lost today to St. Louis. I, I would think Seattle, as they're playing the way they're playing now, they could go up and win that game. Uh, San Francisco is going to be a tough road now at New England. You think about New England and how many points they score at home. And if Colin Kaepernick stays at quarterback and has to generate that point production, it's going to be a wild finish in the West. The NFC East, there's a lot to be decided there. That's Russell Wilson with Marshawn Lynch back in the game. Has all day to throw. And that is intercepted. Patrick Peterson coming forward for the football has the takeaway. The 19th interception for this Arizona defense this season and the sixth interception of the season for Patrick Peterson. And David Carter, I think, got his hand on that ball at the line of scrimmage, which forced really the errant throw, and Patrick Peterson makes the break on it. Golden Tate tripped and went down, so he couldn't get his hand on it. But it was really about David Carter getting his hand up and getting it on that football. That's the first interception thrown by the rookie quarterback at home this season, his ninth interception overall. Cardinals take over in Seattle territory at the 49. All turnovers reviewed to be confirmed. With 342 remaining here in the first half, Cardinals have one timeout. Seattle has all three. You see Pete with his hand on. You can't help that, Russell. You're trying to make a play. Defensive lineman got his hand up. Skelton in trouble. Gets rid of it and completes for a minimal gain. Early Doucette makes the catch. Camp Chancellor making the tackle. And Rich Arnberger with a knee problem. A questionable return. Also on defense, Dan Williams, a hamstring, questionable return for the Cardinals. Well, you better come out quick in this empty backfield center. He's going to get hit. He has a moment and complete short. Andre Roberts making the catch. It'll be third down. In 2006, the most points in the first half is when the Seahawks put up 35. 31 here, facing a third and six. Roberts to the top of your screen. And looks like we're going to get a timeout. S Seattle uses one of their three, so they will have two remaining. Let's check in Los Angeles with Kurt Menefee. Coming up on the Visa Halftime, we'll get you caught up on a busy day, including an emotional win for the Cowboys. A bittersweet victory for the Redskins as RG3 gets injured, and the Falcons get upset by Carolina. We'll see you at the Visa Halftime.
Thanks, Kurt. A lot of interesting highlights in those close finishes. Robert Griffin III hurt, but the Redskins still beat Baltimore in the Beltway battle. This is a good time to tell you that this is a Mike Burks production directed by Michael Frank. Seattle's own Alex Strand from Mercer Island helping us out. And Rich Dewey, the same director who brings you college football. A Seattle resident who'll be directing the Cotton Bowl and enjoying the Seahawks and Cardinals. Sideline throw for Fitzgerald is intercepted. It's Richard Sherman again. Did he stay in bounds? He's dancing like he did. Here comes a flag. Well, Larry Fitzgerald, it looks like they're not going to cover him, but watch Richard Sherman just read the quarterback in John Skelton and peel off and go to Larry Fitzgerald and get interception number two on the day. Clearly had his feet inbound. Sherman with the interception, but the flag came afterward. I mean, you can't have a group celebration. Yeah, you got two guys dancing. Camp <laughs> Chancellor and, and Richard Sherman. And no fun. Does league. it depend on how good they're dancing? <laughs> After the interception, unsportsmanlike conduct on the receiving team for an illegal demonstration. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. They retain possession. First down. Whether you're celebrating or demonstrating, it's still a penalty. And the first time that he's had two interceptions in one game and only his second year, and well, this guy has quite a career ahead of him. Again, that suspension, and that appeal. Keep an eye on that, as will the Seahawks, I'm sure. And John Skelton's making it easy for Richard Freak Sherman feet. today to Freak. have a high impact. Some bad decisions and bad throws. Marshawn Lynch puts a move on up to the 21-yard line. Chris, I know you're a motorhead. He is like a NASCAR when he runs the ball. I mean, he's got those two tires, wide base, low to the ground. He's not going down. He is powerful. Maybe not the fastest, but he's got a good pit crew around him. And he's got no restrictor plate. I know that. That's right. Mid beast mode from the great state of Washington, Greg Biffle and Casey Kane, a couple of terrific NASCAR drivers. Let's go back to Marshawn Lynch because he sets a new career high for rushing yards in a season. We'll talk more about him in a moment. More than 1,200 yards, a career high rushing for Marshawn Lynch, and he still has three games and a half to go. Two minutes remaining. Seattle has the football here in the first half, leading 31-0. Robert Turbin gets it up near the 24-and-a-half-yard line. Marshawn Lynch, you know, people want to know more about him, and what did Pete Carroll tell you? He's a shy, sensitive kind a of guy. highly sensitive young man. <laughs> I said he is. Really well respected by no his doubt. teammates. I'll tell you, and he's only in year six, so he's got a lot of football left ahead of him. He started his career in Buffalo as a first-round pick. Great move by the Seahawks to go get him. But he, he, to me, he seems like he's been in the league for 10 years. And John Schneider, general manager with Pete Carroll, they made that, that trade at the deadline, and there weren't a lot of takers. There were some off-field issues with Marshawn Lynch, and... And he has been the workhorse, but now with Russell Wilson developing along with him, this Seahawk team is more than about defense and running. Chris, they're about family, and I really got a sense of that in hanging with him yesterday at practice. This is a tight-knit football team, period. Turbin carries. Knocked down short of the first down by Paris Lennon. Right at the 30-yard line. He did have a 77 yard run this year showing some of that NASCAR speed against the Detroit Lions. But he gets a lot of that after contact as you pointed out and in that five to seven yard range. And he's really learned to be a, a zone runner you know with all the combination blocks up front. He was more of a, a guy playing behind a man offensive line up in Buffalo. Turbot on third down and tough defense from Quinton Groves. That yellow line merely a superimposed estimation so. Depending on the spot, it would be fourth down, and it is for Seattle. Cardinals are out of timeouts. Patrick Peterson, who lost a fumble on a John Ryan punt, back to receive. John Skelton, 
three interceptions and a lost fumble in this first half, contributing to the lopsided score. Seahawks have it. It was not ruled down. Maxwell came up with the with the loose football. If you're an Arizona Cardinal, I mean, what next? Patrick Peterson, as you said, no fair catch. He's going to push this up inside, and it looked like it was Maxwell who comes in for a suit from behind. Hold it up. Patrick Peterson never saw him, and he reached his right arm in there and watch this. Rip. He rips that ball out, clearly on the ground there. And Peterson was not down. No, and then Maxwell comes up with the recovery. We've seen that a couple of times today. As the ball's gotten knocked out, it's bouncing right into the hands and the good fortunes of the Seattle Seahawks. Our referee, Carl Sheffers, discussing with his crew. We did not hear any kind of a whistle indicating the play was over. The ruling on the field is the receivers possessed the punt and then fumbled it. That fumble was recovered by the kicking team. First down, Seattle. Byron Maxwell with the fumble recovery and the takeaway. Yeah, and you can see the ball is out right there as Maxwell rips it out long before a knee or a leg is down for Patrick Peterson. But Pete Carroll, they're, they're getting all the breaks today. you got to feel so bad for Ken Wisenhunt and his football team. I mean, talking to Kenny yesterday, he said, by far, as a player, as a coach, this has been the most difficult stretch, bar none, throughout his time in pro football. It's getting worse. Eight-game losing streak. Cardinals in trouble. End zone for Rice. Greg Toller knocked it away. Russell Wilson, if you saw him on our NFL on Fox pregame show, talked about why he plays the game. A little guy, well, for his family, his faith, for himself, and for every kid who was told he was too small or anybody who was told they can't do it. And boy, he has exceeded expectations from NC State to Wisconsin to the NFL. What a superb pick by John Schneider, the general manager, who's done a great job with his drafts here in Seattle. Had Russell targeted at number 75 and got him at number 75. Awesome. 11 seconds remaining and two timeouts. Floater. Zach Miller. Touchdown Seahawks. And the 20th touchdown pass for rookie Russell Wilson. He's gone from a caretaker to taking care of everything on offense. What a great move by Zach Miller. And, and this is the two buck, right? The old Tampa Bay two defense. We have two deep safeties, and you run the middle linebacker down the middle of the field on the tight end. But watch this move as he's going to go inside, but he ends up bouncing back behind Paris Lennon. Paris Lennon loses him right there, and it's over. Outstanding route. Very good throw from Russell Wilson. This is ugly. He can zip it in there if he needs to. He can float it if he has to. 24 yards. Russell Wilson, Zach Miller. 20th touchdown toss for the rookie quarterback. And now 38 0. Seahawks. They're doing it on offense and defense. Six takeaways. And where I'm impressed with Russell Wilson today, and we've seen him all year long making plays, Chris, outside of the pocket, you know, breaking contain and, and getting out and really putting the pressure on the defense. He has delivered some strikes from right in the middle of the pocket today. That is a Seattle franchise record with six takeaways and a half and the point total in the first half. Six seconds remain and Seattle gets the football to start the second half. Patrick Peterson, two fumbled punts, both resulting in Seahawk touchdowns. This place is shaking. You feel this booth right now? This crowd is just shaking this whole building. And they won't let up, whatever the score is. That's Lerod Stevens howling.
the Cardinals facing the avalanche of Seahawks scoring. They have some work to do. Let's head to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles for the Visa Halftime Report. Seahawks with a 38-0 halftime lead. They get the football here to start the third quarter against Ken Wisenhunt and the Cardinals. Tim Ryan, Chris Myers, and if you're Ken Wisenhunt trying to end an eight-game losing streak and you're facing this kind of deficit, what do you tell your team at halftime? Well, first of all, it's not happening today, I don't think. I mean, they are totally outmatched with how their quarterback has played. But, look, you don't get to this league without having a lot of pride and a lot of fight in you. And I think if you're Ken Wisenhunt and this is your football team, you say, look, if anything, play for the name on the back of your jersey. Go out there, put your big boy pads on. You're probably going to see 20-plus runs in the second half of this game. And walk out of here with your held up high, whether you win or lose. You just can't win with six turnovers, and two of those coming on the special teams. I think you've said it three times. It has been an unstoppable avalanche today for the Arizona Cardinals. And if you're the Seahawks, you're in tune for the playoffs, on your way to your eighth win. What do you want to do here in the second half? Well, you, number one, you don't want to get any injuries. I, I think that's the biggest thing. And, and protect your quarterback, run the ball, you know, keep Marshawn Lynch over on the sideline, get some quality reps out of Robert Turbin, your backup running back. You can follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Next Sunday, Cardinals will be at home against the Detroit Lions. And there's Ryan Lindley, the rookie quarterback, who... Was, Why not? What do you what do you have to lose? Well, Skelton with the three interceptions, one of those a pick six. And Lindley was horrendous last week in a loss to the Jets when the defense played so well. As Jay Feely starts the third quarter, and that's Leon Washington. Spins out of a tackle, stop short of the 15-yard line. Let's check in down on the field with Jamie Maggio. Thank you, Chris. Well, with a large lead that the Seahawks have, I asked head coach Pete Carroll if he planned to rest any of his starters in the second half. He said, we don't only really have so many guys. Everybody's playing. He said, but what I want to see is to see us take care of the ball better. I want us to be more disciplined here in the second half. Chris, Tim. All right, thanks, Jamie. They'll start out the one miscue on the part of Russell Wilson. What are you talking Wilson. about, Pete? You're trying to make stuff up. You had one miscue, and it was on a tip ball. <laughs> An interception by Russell Wilson, who later threw his 20th touchdown pass of this is rookie season. Robert Turbin is the back. Marshawn Lynch already his career-high rushing totals for a season. Resting. Passes complete short to Zach Miller. Cardinal defense came in seventh of the NFL. Ray Horton, their defensive coordinator, they have a goal board, color-coded, and green is the area to stay in. They, they want to be a top-five defense overall. They're plus they're one of the few teams, Tim, that had a plus-seven turnover ratio coming in that hadn't had a winning record. Of course, Which that's going to be lopsided now. Yeah, now it's plus-one after the, the first half with the, with the six turnovers. Hey. Boop, 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 boop. Second down, Lynch comes back in, and Lynch is loose. Marshawn Lynch goes out of bounds up near the 37-yard line. Now this is this inside gut play where they bring the tight end here, and they get the block down. You're going to see it McCoy right there gets the chop down on Groves, and then that's, that's, that's really Marshawn Lynch in a nutshell. The wide base, stepping over legs stepping through traffic and picking up positive yards an 18 yard run and he carries again and powers his way across the 41 all the way up near the 45 yard line moving a pile of tacklers his legs never come together watch his split legs as he's in traffic here Wide base, boom, 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 taking short steps and just carrying the pile. Nearing another 100-yard day. Robert Turman checks in. Wouldn't be surprised if they take a big shot here against Arizona and just end it. There goes Robert Turman. He may end it himself all the way into Arizona territory at the 38-yard line. 
A 16-yard run from the rookie, Robert yeah. Turbin. Watch the right side of the offensive line and how they just keep blocking. This is classic Tommy Cable. You look at Giacomini, you look at Moffitt, and it's that zone play where everybody comes off to the left the same way, and they just keep grinding because they know these running backs get yards after the contact. You never know when the last block or the extra block is going to pop them free. This is Turbin carrying. Hit hard, but he still falls forward. You mentioned Tom Cable, offensive line coach of the Seahawks, former Raider head coach. Let's check in for a game break and head to Los Angeles. All right, Chris, thanks. 49ers, of course, looking to stay atop the NFC West. Frank Gore weaving his way down to the one. Punched in by Anthony Dixon, scoring the fourth quarter. 20 to 6, Niners up on the Dolphins. Chris and Tim. San Francisco looks like they'll be protecting their lead in the right. NFC West as the Seahawks are hot on their tail and in the lead position for the wild card. Turbin carries. It started out this season as Marshawn Lynch's offense carrying the load. He's coming back in and on the road, rookie Russell Wilson, who got the start over Matt Flynn, loses a tough game, had chances late to pull it out and each game he's gotten better and each game this offense has gotten better. What did Pete Carroll tell us yesterday that, that it's wide open for him now. You know, you know they were a little apprehensive early to really turn it loose and now they're thinking maybe they should have earlier in the season and just let Russell Wilson go. As Lynch goes and Marshawn Lynch he might go he could go he did go. They just got bit. Both inside linebackers got blocked, and it was the run game right down the middle for Marshawn Lynch. About the way he uses his vision and his blocks in, in the open field. So much for resting the star runner. Seventh 100 yard rushing game of this season. His third touchdown run today. Tim Ryan, Chris Myers, it does feel like Christmas here in Seattle, weather-wise and festive for Seahawk fans. The 12th man club. <laughs> it feels like there's 13 and 14 man support today. It's 45 to nothing as Hoska boots it for Stevens Howling. And gets up, here comes the flag as he gets to the 22-yard line. We'll check the penalty. Marshawn Lynch, that 33-yard touchdown run, so adding to his best ever season rushing yard of 1,266. Holding number 56 of the return team. 10-yard penalty, first down. Chris, we talked about it earlier, and what an asset Michael Robinson has been as a lead blocker, and he was really the guy that helped spring Marshawn Lynch free on that long run. His ninth touchdown of the year. John Skelton stays in at quarterback. Three interceptions and a loss fumble. On first down. Beanie Wells is back in the game. It's a healthy chunk of first down yardage. It really is amazing, Tim, when the Cardinals got out to the 4-0 start, best since the 70s for this franchise, and then spiraling into this eight on its way to nine game losing streak. Well think about how the, the season started. I mean you said the 4-0 start. You take that back to last year. They finished 7-9 so they had won 11 of 13 games. The excitement level was sky high and then the injuries started to mount up at offensive line at running back at quarterback and they haven't been the same. And another interception. Skelton throws it to Bobby Wagner. His second pick of the game. Five turnovers by John Skelton. And 
Seattle with four interceptions. And three on the season now for Bobby Wagner. We talked about the, the takeaways needing to go up. Bobby Wagner's just sitting right in the hook zone in front of Andre Roberts. And, and again, another bad decision. You got to question John Skelton, and, and that ball came out funny. Why is he even throwing these balls? With we blue jerseys all around his receiver. We may see Ryan Lindley for Arizona, but we are going to see a quarterback change. Resting Russell Wilson, Matt Flynn. This is the first snap Matt Flynn has taken all season for the Seahawks. Free agent signee, former backup in Green Bay to Aaron Rodgers as Robert Turbin carries. And Flynn was signed to become the starting quarterback here, but that was before the Seahawks drafted Russell Wilson in the third round, and he won the competition in training camp in the preseason. Yeah, and I'll say this for Matt Flynn. You know, he had an elbow that, that was aggravated at the end of training camp, which I think was a, a bit of a factor, but... I think it's more Russell Wilson won the job rather than Matt Flynn losing the job. That, that's just how good that guy right there, number three, Russell Wilson was from day one. And R Russell Wilson has more NFL starts than Matt Flynn. Certainly not in years of experience on a roster as Turbin carries again and fights down inside the 10-yard line. But for Matt Flynn, the professionalism of doing his job, supporting, in fact, Pete Carroll in the overtime win at Chicago in the locker room, Pete Carroll was quick to congratulate Russell Wilson on driving the team, but he said, and our best to Matt Flynn for calling tails when we sent him out for the coin flip before overtime. I'll tell you, Pete has done such a great job, and, and we talked about this team being tight, kind of that family knit group. Pete said they've worked very, very hard on that really making these guys all you know no matter what your what your commitment is going to be or what your impact is going to be on game day we're all in this together as a family 53 guys and it's obvious turban carries again it'll be second and goal for seattle the seahawks trying to win their third straight and go to six and zero oh at home yeah there's home field advantage and then there's the Seattle home field advantage. We've seen it and heard it today. Here's the beauty of this place. They're up 45 to nothing, and there's not an empty seat in the building. And we're going to hang out for the party. Still noisy when the Cardinals are on offense. Leon Washington in as Matt Flynn throws end zone high and a little incomplete. Ball is tipped. It'll be third and goal. Really good read by Matt Flynn. You can see that pre-snap that Sidney Rice was going to be isolated, one-on-one -on -one coverage coming out of the slot. Flynn saw it. He tried to thread the needle, but Daryl Washington, here's the route. Sidney Rice there. But Daryl Washington at the last second got in the throwing lane and looked like got his hand up, his fingertips just enough to force that ball off target. Daryl Washington having a Pro Bowl year, leading the team in tackles. And nine quarterback sacks. On third down, that is Golden Tate, who is going to be wrestled out of bounds by Sam Ocho. And here comes the field goal unit. Hauska made a 31-yard field goal earlier in the day. The four interceptions for Skelton, a career high. And Bobby Wagner with his second pick, the rookie middle linebacker for Seattle to set up Hauschka and this 28-yard field goal try. John Ryan is the holder. 7.50 and the clock runs here in the third quarter. And he got it. 48 nothing for the hometown Seahawks. You're watching the NFL on Fox. Kevin Cobb, the most productive. He's in the middle with a rib injury, trying to throw, but not ready to go. Skelton got the start. He started when the regular season opened, but was injured when Cobb took over. And then Ryan Lindley, the rookie drafted in the sixth rounder, who struggled last week, was benched for this game. Looks like he might be back out there. Yeah, I'm quite sure he's, he's coming out to... Try to get some production for these Cardinals. No catches for Larry Fitzgerald in this game. Unbelievable. Stevens howling up across the 25-yard line. In the third quarter, here comes a different quarterback, the rookie from San Diego State. 
Card Cardinal franchise hadn't lost more than eight in a row in one season since the 40s. Ryan Little is in a quarterback. Sixth round draft pick from San Diego State. He's yet to throw a touchdown pass in the NFL. Started last week in a 7-6 loss to the Jets. I'll tell you, he actually, and I know he threw two interceptions that came back for touchdowns against the St. Louis Rams to Janoris Jenkins, but he was making some good throws in that game, especially in the first half. He came in when Skelton was benched against Atlanta back in November, played the Ram game, and actually had some drives. Yeah. Worked well with the offense. Looks like confusion there as he keeps. Just a prime example, Chris, of, of the dysfunction of this offense. We've already seen it a couple of times today with both quarterbacks, and earlier it was William Powell. This time it was Beanie Wells. They're just not on the same page in terms of what the play call is and how to execute it. And I know for Kenny Wisenhunt, who is, is so bright, such a grinder to, to details, it's those mental errors, Chris, that have just crushed him in terms of his competitive spirit all year long. And he is on me. You can get that feeling of talking to him yesterday. I think Kenny Wisenhunt is ready to fight everybody. Ron Hausler catches it, slips through a tackle, and fights for a first down. Bruce Irvin, the rookie, first-round pick from West Virginia for Seattle, put some pressure on. And how about uh, Irvin is six foot three, but his parents not that tall. Well, I, I asked him. I said, "Look, you, you you are so fast and so explosive. You must have been a small guy before you got big. How big are mom and dad?" And it was so strange. I mean, he looked right at us. He goes, "Mom is five six, and pops is five six. I said, "What?" Yep. And he's got seven sacks to lead all rookies. Hasn't had one lately, but put the heat on there. Lindley's throw is incomplete for Fitzgerald. Let's check in with Kurt Benefee on the 49ers and Dolphins. Well, check out the catch by Anthony Cassano, the tight end. Takes this one from Brian Tannehill. Sweet grab, gets the touchdown. Pulls the Dolphins to within a touchdown. 2013 in the fourth quarter. Chris and Tim, we thought maybe you'd like to see a game where both teams were scoring. <laughs> Competitive football and in the NFC West it is competitive Seattle keeping the heat on the 49ers and Jeff Fisher what a job he's done for the Rams who won again today and are undefeated in the division in the NFC West the Seahawks trying to get their first win in the division they lost all three on the road and of course they'll get the Rams coming up and the 49ers here in Seattle. And Pete Carroll, you know, I asked him, he's in his early 60s, and all that energy and the enthusiasm is real. And I said, you know what, do you have a down day where it's blue and you're all? He said, I wouldn't waste an entire day. Well, and then you tried to ask him about a bad moment. <laughs> this guy was, he, and he doesn't he, have bad moments. He said, I, I, I think that something good is always about to happen. That's how I get through. The and born optimist. He's well, not what he thought when he woke up this morning. About 100 good things are going to happen. Just the opposite for Lindley and the oh. Cardinals. Balls out. Fumble. Still rolling around. Looks like Seattle and Richard Sherman may have got to that football, and it's another takeaway. And it is Richard Sherman for the Seahawks. Seven takeaways today. Well, and Pete Carroll is just dialing up all kinds of exotic pressures. I believe that time it was Deron Johnson. The extra safety coming off the edge and Ryan Lindley in the inexperience because he's got to get rid of this ball. I mean, he held that ball five seconds, no awareness that Jerron Johnson was coming up from behind him. Look, you got all those guys. It's like one piece of meat and you got 11 dogs that are trying to go after it. You've got to be aware that you're going to get bit eventually. He never got rid of the ball and Jerron Johnson made him pay for it. Well, difficult for any rookie quarterback to be thrown into a situation like this on the road against this ball hawking defense. Leon Washington, the carry. Just over 440 to go here in the third, along with Tim Ryan, Chris Myers, and I know your your father, Gary Ryan, is in the hospital in Boise, Idaho, and our thoughts and prayers are with him and your family. You'll you'll head out there after this game and. Uh, we hope you get to talk to him and wish him well. I appreciate that, Chris. Thank you. He tunes in whenever he can on a Sunday to listen to you call NFL games. And, of course, the 
the Seahawks often broadcast in the Idaho region. Keep fighting, Pops. I'll be there later. Washington carries for a first down and fighting hard inside the 20-yard line. A couple of things to think about if you're a Seahawks fan. A most impressive shutout, and we're quite a ways from that yet here in the third quarter. Back in 1984, Seattle's best shutout was a 45 0 win over the Chiefs. So if they keep the shutout going here, and most points ever in a Seahawk game, 1977, they scored 56 against the Buffalo Bills. That is within their reach. As Washington carries. Marshawn Lynch carried 11 times for 128 yards and had three touchdowns. Russell Wilson only needed to throw 13 times. Able to get a touchdown, did suffer his first interception at home this year. You He's, know, I, I, I can't, in talking to him, and we've had him six times, I can't find the flaw in the guy <laughs> other than him being 5'10 and a half, and, and that clearly hasn't been a flaw all year long. <laughs> He's, He's used it to his advantage, Tim, whatever he, whatever he could. In fact, Russell Wilson every Tuesday as Robert Turbin carries again. Every Tuesday, his wife, if she can go in, goes and visits the Children's Hospital here in Seattle. Started doing it as soon as he got here. Not a lot of publicity or fanfare. Just a way to kind of help people feel good about themselves. Yeah, you know, those innate, uh, innate leadership skills. You know, they, they won that big game in Chicago last week in overtime. And Russell was able to, to do what he did. A, a huge achievement. They got on the plane to come home. Pete Carroll gave him the victory Monday. We'll see you Wednesday. Everybody off. Yeah, but I know the quarterback will be there tomorrow. Russell Wilson went around to all the rookies and said, we're going to be there at 9 in the morning. We've done it every week. I think it's important that we stay disciplined and stay on the course. That's who that guy is. And all the rookies showed up. Flynn overthrows Doug Baldwin. William Gay back there covering. Some rookies on this team that, you know, Robert Turbin, certainly a key contributor, along with Russell Wilson. And on defense, we've seen the rookie Bobby Wagner today with marvelous year. A couple of interceptions. Absolutely. How much is, in terms of the playoff run, that secondary going to hurt if Browner can come back? But the Seahawks do end up losing Sherman as we see a 32 yard field goal try here for Hauschka. Well, it's certainly hard to evaluate it today with how this landslide has gone in favor of the Seattle Seahawks. But. Guys are so key in what they've done all year long. And there, there's no way they can be the same defensively without those big two lockdown corners. Seahawks add to their lead. It's now 51 nothing here in Seattle. It's been that kind of day for Ken Wisenhunt and the Cardinals, and actually that kind of nine-week stretch. They've lost some close games. Nothing like this. I mean, in those eight losses, Chris, four of them, they were within a score of winning those games. I mean. They've given up 141 passing yards to Russell Wilson and the Seahawks offense today, and they've done 51 points on the board. Hauschka to kick off, and he does have three returns for a touchdown in his career. The Rod Stevens Howlett with the best return of the day. Ryan Lindley will come back out on offense. Fox tonight, animation domination. An all-new night of young love and cool cats, the Simpsons. Bob's Burgers, Family Guy, and American Dad, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, tonight on Fox. Tim Ryan, Chris Myers, Jamie Maggia down on the field. We're glad you're watching the NFL on Fox. And we always root for competitive games, but there's always something to find in a game. And for Ryan Lindley, who's had opportunities before, and this is rookie season during the year, in a tough spot. Beanie Wells in the backfield. Pass for Fitzgerald, and he can't hold on to that. Chris, he doesn't have a catch in this game, and now the now the emotions are flying out there. Beanie Wells and Clint McDonald. Looks like the UFC event they had in Seattle here on Fox last night. But well, maybe not as exciting. <laughs> I was reaching. And here's where it started as. You're going to see Beanie Wells go hit Clint McDonald and just get lambasted. It looked like he was taking it to McDonald and got smoked, and then McDonald taunting over the top of him. And a 
minimum. Should have got McDonald there for a taunting call on Beanie Wells. But 129 games, Larry Fitzgerald with a catch. Nothing today. Tim, you played down in the trenches in the NFL. And if you're a member of the Cardinals here, you see this team twice a year. They're in your division. You're getting embarrassed. Oh, it's fist fight. Really. And, and within the whistle, of course, and, and within the rules. But I'm fighting every play. Discussing, and this is always the interesting part on a flag like this. There are foul, dead ball fouls by both teams on the play. Taunting on the defense. Personal foul, number 71, for a late hit on the offense. Those fouls offset. Now, Clint McDonald, certainly 69 there, was guilty of the taunt as he stood over Beanie Wells after he put him on the ground and, and got in his face. And maybe College was reacting to stick up for Beanie Wells. But it offsets, and with 1.54 to go here in the third, from the 38-yard line of Arizona, it is second down. William Powell. It'll bring up third down. Let's check in with Kurt Benefee for a game break. Well, the Giants had a 22-point lead at one point in the third quarter, but the Saints are marching back. Darren Sproles, nine-yard catch from Drew Brees. It's now an eight-point game as they get ready to start the fourth quarter at 35-27. Listen to it. Thanks, Kurt. And when you have a quarterback like Drew Brees, you can come back from a large deficit. Well, we said it earlier in the broadcast, and, and with these Arizona Cardinals, they don't have a good enough guy at the position to cover up all the mistakes. Look at Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers and all the hits and the bad offensive line. He just keeps scoring points. Catch made by Michael Floyd, the first-round pick from Notre Dame, who goes out of bounds, and the Cardinals from Ryan Lindley's throw get a first down. Some of those close games after an 18 yard completion there after that 4 0 start. The Cardinals lose to the Rams but then the overtime loss to Buffalo they lose by three later in the stretch they lose to Atlanta by four and their defense had all the takeaways and then they lose by one last week to the Jets. Chances to end the misery in this losing skill. Beanie Wells. Richard Sherman, who has two interceptions and a fumble recovery, makes the stop. And with Beanie Wells, who has not been healthy and has not run well, he was that kind of a risk as a pick when they drafted him in the opening round. Eight turnovers for the Cardinals in this game. Their record for most turnovers, 12 back in the 1950 season. Third quarter, about to come to an end. The Seahawks and their 51-0 lead head to the fourth quarter here in Seattle. Seahawk fans come out to support their team here in Seattle and they are rewarded today with a 51 nothing performance so far as we start the fourth quarter against the rival Cardinals Beanie Wells carries the Cardinals worth repeating beat Seattle to start the season of course in Arizona and the story of this game the eight takeaways by Seattle against Ken Wisenhunt's team. That's the most uh, by any one team during this year. And what you got to like about Seattle is, is areas where they were lacking offensively earlier in the year. Red zone, third down, big plays. All of that has really stepped up and uptick here in the last several games. And then today, the big one was really third down for their defense and forcing takeaways. They've been great in both of those situations. That's an understatement. The incomplete.
Eight takeaways for Seattle. The team record is 10 in one game. How about all the blue jerseys around the football every time it was knocked out? I mean, snap to whistle for the Seattle Seahawks getting after it. Fair catch for Leon Washington inside the 10. Richard Sherman with two interceptions and a fumble recovery. Bobby Wagner with two interceptions. Russell Wilson cheering his team on here in the fourth quarter. Here in Seattle, the Seahawks have scored in a number of different ways. Through the air, on the ground, fumble, punt, interception, return. A 51-0 advantage, and they have the football. Matt Flynn in a quarterback for the first time this year, giving Russell Wilson some rest as Leon Washington carries and slips a tackle for a first down. Let's check back with Kurt on that 49er Dolphin game. Yeah, it looks like things will stay status quo in the NFC West. Colin Kaepernick. When it looked like they were running out the clock, takes it 50 yards against Miami for the touchdown. That pretty much seals it. Right now, they're up two scores inside the two-minute warning. Chris and Tim. Thanks, Kurt. Tim, you get to see the 49ers on a regular basis. So that quarterback move, big picture. What do you think? I, I, I think it's going to end up coming back to, to possibly bite him. I really do. And I got a lot of respect for Colin Kaepernick. He is just so darn fast and, and electric with his speed. But I don't know what his floor is. We know what Alex Smith's floor is. Matt Flynn completes a pass to Anthony McCoy, who started this game in the opening quarter, making big plays. He has really developed into a fine player here for the Seattle Seahawks. And a lot of it comes when the quarterback is scrambling and extending plays. We saw it in Miami when he, when he rolled across the back of the end zone and was there for Russell Wilson. Here's... Matt Flynn, who's not always been known for his elusiveness and mobility, he just runs right out of the arm tackle of William Gay, keeps his eyes down the field, and sees his big tight end. Anthony McCoy, the best game of his career, and this is third year. Three catches, 105 yards. Leon Washington carries. Well, now you got J.R. Sweezy and Paris Lennon going at it down there. Wouldn't be surprised if they get Sweezy for a headbutt on Paris Lennon. After the play, personal foul, headbutt, number 64 offense, 15-yard penalty, second down. Mark off the... Penalty. Let's go back to Anthony McCoy because his 100-yard receiving day for the Seahawks, Tim, they, they had gone 21 games without having a 100-yard receiver. In fact, the last Seahawk to do it, Ben Obamato, back against the Bengals in 2011, and Obamato on injured reserve. In fact, the team released Braylon Edwards, injured waived this week. And they play so much with the two tight end sets with Zach Miller and Anthony McCoy. And McCoy is a huge part of what they do, Chris, in terms of all the motions and loading and reloading formations. Good to see. Golden Tate with a catch, but it was tackled right there at the 30-yard line. Around the league today with just three games remaining after this weekend in the regular season. Matt Ryan and a losing effort. Yeah, get off our field. Cam like, Newton says we will with a W. Cam Newton had a 73-yard touchdown run, and Nick Foles led a comeback. The Eagles were able to end their losing streak in Tampa Bay. The OT, Kirk Menefee and the guys, all the highlights. Third down and 20. From the pocket, Flynn delivers, and what a hit on Sidney Rice. Rashad Johnson delivered it, and the flag is out. How about Sidney Rice? Are you kidding me? In a 51 nothing game to go across the middle. Yeah, and absolutely get rocked from the shoulder of Rashad Johnson. I mean, this is as big a hit as I've seen in the league this year. Wow. Right there, and and Sidney Rice, who was, you know, took a headshot last week. Unnecessary roughness for an illegal hit on the defenseless punt receiver. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. 
So Sidney Rice last week takes the headshot on the game winner for the touchdown. He's cleared right away, really, by the team doctor. Goes through the concussion protocol. Has a history of some head trauma. He just gets absolutely blasted. His head almost taken off, and he pops up and spins the ball. An 18-yard catch, and then the 15-yard penalty. And Sidney Rice, you know, he's only had one season where he played every game. He's had two different shoulder operations. He's battled multiple concussions. And he's played every game this year for the Seahawks and is proud of that. How about that throw from Matt Flynn? You can see why Seattle went out inside him. And I know Cardinal fans are watching Matt Flynn, Tim, and saying, no, wait a minute. We knew we had Kevin Cobb, but third round draft pick Russell Wilson Matt Flynn signed as a free agent since Kurt Warner the quarterback position in Arizona has been a big question mark. Absolutely. Now I will give Kevin Cobb some credit and I think three and two is the starter this year and before he got hurt you know in his mobility and his ability to help out that offensive line as I said earlier defiant X's and O's allowed him to be in games and win games. I think the big question now is can he take a hit and, and I know it's been in the papers that his rehab hasn't gone good in terms of the healing of the rib. I think the biggest question and Kevin Cobb's throwing the ball pretty good according to Ken Wittenhunt in practice but they really don't feel like Chris with that offensive line in front of him that he can just survive taking a hit at this point. Switch pass it complete for Doug Baldwin. And if as Ken Wittenhunt told us if Kevin Cobb himself isn't confident that he can take a hit then it's not worth putting the guy out there. You can call Star Star NFL to download NFL Mobile now and get coverage of every NFL game. That's a Star Star, star, star NFL. Conduct, number 58 defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah, it, it, here's the deal. It, it, both of these head coaches got to call their players over and say, look, and, and if you're Kenny Wiz and Hunt, I know it's ugly. I know you guys want to fight. I know it's, you know, it hurts your pride. You may be a bit embarrassed, but. We got to play within the rules here. Let, let, let's be smart. Penalty will move the Seahawks up to the 20 yard line. 10 minutes remaining in what has to be a nightmare stretch of nine weeks and another 10 minutes on top for Ken Wisenhunt. Meanwhile, Pete Carroll has calmed down. I don't think I've ever seen him this calm. 319. 319. Deion Washington carries and he'll lose yardage. Cardinal defense battling to the bitter end. That's David Carter on the tackle. Let's check back in with Kurt Menefee. Well, Saints trying to mount that comeback against the Giants. It takes a little hit right here. Drew Brees picked off for the second time by Stevie Brown in this game. Brown returns it 70 yards. Doesn't get in the end zone, but it kills the Saints threat. 42-27, 10 and a half minutes to go in regulation. I like saying that. Chris and Tim. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Kurt. The NFC South standings with the Bucks losing today. The Saints on their way to a loss. Tough running from Leon Washington. All the way down to the 10-yard line. Here comes a flag. Carl Jeffers himself. For the umpire threw. It's going to be a hold. Eight penalties Holding. for him. Number 74, offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. The Seahawks and also eight for Arizona. John Moffat called for the infraction. How about the, the, you know, in the NFC West with the Seahawks and 49ers and Kurtz keeping us up to date. San Francisco did win 27 to 13. They beat the Dolphins. But in the NFC East, the Giants appear to be taking a little more control. But both the Cowboys and Redskins alive. Are winning today. Alive. It's going to be a great finish across the board in the NFC. Yeah. And the Eagles won today. Wins all around in the NFC East as Flynn sets to throw. And open, but incomplete for Evan Moore. A little contact. It looked like he may have even pushed on. Yeah, and, and listen, if I'm the Arizona Cardinals, it's 51 nothing. Why are you throwing the football at us? I understand there's no mercy rule in pro football, but. Pass interference number 82. Offense, 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. And I understand that if it comes down to a tiebreaker, you know, the points could play a factor, but how many points do you need? And there's Evan Moore as he's looking back. There's the push. And there's the push up with both hands on the shoulder of, of Adrian Wilson. You know, and I know if you're an Arizona Cardinal, it's our job to go defend and, and to stop him, but 
taking shots into the end zone. If I'm Arizona, I, I am agitated. You're resting your starting quarterback, and you have Matt Flynn, who's gotten into the game. You figure they want to run out the clock here as Robert Turbin carries. Well, and based on that shot we saw Sidney Rice take about six plays ago, you're putting your guys at risk. You know, the Seahawks home wins against, and we all saw, don't snicker, that Monday night victory against Green Bay. They beat the Cowboys here. A dramatic win against the Patriots here. Russell Wilson leading them back. Undefeated at home. But then winning on the road. They wanted Carolina, but the impressive overtime win that Russell Wilson drove them 97 yards and then into overtime 80 yards. Are you out here for one? Beating Chicago last week. They own the tiebreaker against teams like the Vikings and the Bears and the Cowboys should they get into that situation as Turbin carries. The OT with Kirk Menefee and the gang. All the highlights, fantasy stats and numbers, and they'll help you with the latest playoff scenario in the NFC. There's still a lot to sort through. Even the number one seed with Atlanta having clinched their division but losing today, they have two losses. The 49ers have just three. Yeah, I, I think you're going to see. I think you're. Gonna, I think they're going to call off the dogs here. I mean, fourth down, they're going for it. It's fourth and 23. Let's see what Pete Carroll's going to do here. Daryl Bubble, the offensive coordinator. Well, I think kicking a field goal might be rubbing it in. They're taking a shot for the end zone and incomplete for Jermaine Curse. William Gay covering curse from Lakewood Washington and a free agent who played at the University of Washington. You can see the steam coming out of that headset. Oh, yeah. No question. It is 51 nothing and the Cardinals will take over. Ken Wisenhunt is in his career coaching against Seattle. Eight wins, four losses. Pete Carroll, this is third year. And you have seen the bad blood on the field between these two NFC West division rivals. Even in a 51 nothing game. Ryan Lindley to Larry Fitzgerald who has his first catch of the game and the 130th consecutive game with a reception. A Cardinal high water mark 750th career regular season reception for the six time Pro Bowl. Tell you one thing, we talked about Fitzgerald's character earlier in the, in the game. There's still a lot of character on this team in trying to get into their heads. This locker room, believe it or not, is not divided. Guys aren't going fist to cuffs over at the facility during the day. Beanie Wells, but a flag comes in as he goes to midfield. An offensive line that has had its share of injuries. Holding number 87, offense. 10 yard penalty, second down. Wipes out the 14-yard run. Jeff King called for the penalty. The two starting rookie tackles, a fourth-rounder and a seventh-rounder, but then Lyle Semline, one of the leaders up front for Russ Grimm, the offensive line coach. Rich Arnberger went out injured and has returned. But it's just been that kind of a kind of a season, kind of a stretch run for this Cardinal team. Second and 18 from the 25. Incomplete. As rough as it's been, Tim, you made a good point that there isn't any, you know, the defense has done its job, the offense has it, not, not amongst the Cardinal players themselves. No, and, and I, I've never been through a, an eight or a nine game losing streak. But when you get and you're eliminated from the playoffs, I was on a, a six and ten team, I believe a seven and nine team, and you know that guy who was your best friend, who was your locker mate, and you know right next to you, who you were hanging out with in August and September, you get into these golf days of you know the early winter and a, a losing streak. It, it, you want to fight that guy. It's not good. William Powell short of the 30 yard line and it'll be fourth down yeah, your comments were you know you're looking at that guy they were funny a month ago now they're not funny don't even look at me well whatever happened with Darnell Dockett and Kerry Rhodes and whatever a defensive player should or shouldn't do based on what happened with the loss to the Jets last week and the subsequent 
I won't say, a, I'll say a benching at least for the start of the game, and then the the fine that the team handed out to Darnell Dockett. We've sat and talked with him. He he is a fighter. He's a guy you want on your side in Absolutely. any situation. Absolutely. Dave Zastadil, Leon Washington. Leon Washington is going to be brought down short of the 38-yard line, but a nifty return. Sam Ocho hung on to a 26-yard run back. Seattle with the lead and the football, and they had the lead all day long. Seahawks about to put the finishing touches on their first win in the division this season and keeping the record at home perfect at 6 0. Pete Carroll chatting with Sidney Rice. Blue 45. Blue 45 set. Robert Turbin carries for the Seahawks and slips all the way up across the 45 yard line. Fox Sports coverage of the UFC continues Friday. A full night of fights on both Fuel TV and FX. Then on Saturday, January 26th, the UFC will be back here on Fox as Rampage Jackson returns to the Octagon. Plus, flyweight Demetrius Johnson will put his title on the line against John Dodson. Fox Sports is your home for the UFC. And again, quite a UFC event here in Seattle last night. Cardinals will use a timeout. So we'll be back in a moment. You wonder what he will be saying behind closed doors to his teammates as they have to face the Lions next Sunday at home. Ball start number 82, offense, five yard penalty, second down. That's on Evan Moore, and that's the 10th penalty called against Seattle, nine against the Arizona Cardinals in this game. Well, I don't know if you're Larry Fitzgerald. What, what do you I mean what's left to say to your football team based on your your inept ability to be good at the quarterback position. Well I mean you're it's as if you're wasting a Hall of Fame receiver and a pretty good defense in these years that will click by that? since Kurt Warner in 2009 retired. Robert Turbin down inside the 35 yard line. You've seen a lot of hustle and effort out of this Cardinal team today. But can there be after a 26 yard run that big of a mismatch? Well here, here's the beauty of, of what Seattle is is they've changed their running game this season and they've gone to a lot of the gap power stuff the man blocking Chris where you're blocking man down and you're pulling guards you're pulling the, the tight ends around you're leading up inside with fullbacks that hasn't always been a staple of their run game. And I think like a, a lot of the other successful teams, they have really diversified their plan of attack when running the football. And Robert Turbin, who carries again his first 100-yard game, and this is his rookie year. Marshawn Lynch again also over 100 yards today. In the NFC West, 49ers have won today. And we'll count the Seahawks victory as well. But that New England game tough for San Francisco, and then they come to Seattle. Oh yeah, that, here's the thing on Colin Kaepernick, and I'm not sure what his numbers were today. I know he had the big run at the end, and they won. But you know, all all guys that evaluate quarterbacks in this league said, "Show me the guy after four games when a defensive coordinator gets a four-game break on his behavior pattern. That four-game break is coming right to the hands of Bill Belichick and his preparation for Colin Kaepernick. And the beauty of New England is they can stop the run." So it is going to be in Colin Kaepernick's hands. They score a lot of points offensively, that being the Patriots. So I think this division race is still very much alive between the Seahawks and the 49ers. And safe to assume that both Seattle and San Francisco will be in the playoffs. It's just who's the wild card and who's the division winner. And the Rams are not out of it yet and get a shot at both of these teams. Seahawks working on their most lopsided shutout ever. In their history, if they can make this stand, Matt Flynn is going to throw, and underneath completes to Doug Baldwin, knocked out of bounds near the five-yard line. They might be going for their point total record of 56. 
And you know he doesn't like that. Well, and it just looks like, I mean, Pete Carroll, and I got so much respect for Pete as a coach and as a person. I mean, he's not even thinking about mercy on, on the Arizona Cardinals. He's trying to develop his quarterback in case he needs him in a real game. The headaches for Ray Horton. 27 yard gain. They actually spot the ball down at the three. First and goal. Leon Washington and untouched into the end zone. A record setting run for the littlest Seahawk standing at five foot eight. And the Seahawks are pouring it on. Uh, they really miss Dan Williams too right in the middle of that defense and, and they have since he hurt his hamstring earlier in the game. David Carter had no chance of making the play in the backfield there on Leon Washington untouched. John Schneider general manager standing next to Pete Carroll the two of them coming in together and this the third season. I'll tell you what you, you talk about stacking talent with later round picks on this football team it's unbelievable how John Schneider finds some of these guys KJ Wright in the fourth round Bobby Wagner in the second round you, you, I mean you got Richard Sherman as a fifth round pick Brandon Browner was a, a college free agent coming out of the CFL Seahawks needed to use a timeout. They were a player short on the extra point team. They're probably too tired of running out there today. And this will be a high total in franchise history. By the time that 58th point goes up on the board, 56 the old mark set back in 1977 for the Seahawks. And now 58 to nothing. The OT is uh, coming up here on Fox, so let's check in with Kurt Benefee, see what he has for us. Coming up on the OT presented by Lowe's, we'll have a recap of a great NFL Sunday, including highlights of the Cowboys' emotional win, an update on RG3's injury, plus post-game interviews and exclusive locker room access. Hey, guys, good job. Who says they don't work? We'll huh. see you on the OT presented by Lowe's. Always on the move. The Giants crush the Saints 52 to 27. Actually, there's about five minutes left, so they have just added to their lead. That's not a final score yet. But that would all but eliminate the Saints from any playoff possibility. The frustration of Darnell Dockett. And Larry Fitzgerald. Should be interesting as we get to Arizona next week and, and meet and try to prepare with the Cardinals before that Lions game. Whoa. Cardinals will take the ball on the 20 yard line. Tim, if you are Ken Wisenhut, you started Skelton, who was very ineffective with four interceptions, his career high, and if Boss fumbled, do you start Ryan Lindley, the rookie? Next Sunday at home against the Lions. Well, I, I think Ken will go back and look at the tape and evaluate and really see how much of it was John Skelton's fault. Now, from my eyes up here, there were some bad decisions thrown into, you know, bad coverage looks, and the inaccuracy was was obvious. Um, but Kenny will make that choice after reviewing the tape. My feeling is Ryan Lindley and not a nine-game losing streak. You know about Skelton. What do you have to lose in playing Ryan Lindley? Try to develop. It. His throw here is tipped and nearly caught by Hausler, but incomplete. It'll be second down. Checking some of the individual performances. Adrian Peterson and the Vikings with an impressive win, still in the playoff hunt, beating the Bears at home. Alfred Morris, the rookie. Robert Griffin III was hurt, but he keeps chugging along. And Jamal Charles for Kansas City in a losing effort. At Cleveland. Now we're talking about John Schneider and those late round picks. How about Mike Shanahan with those running backs? Alfred Morris, you kidding me? Hausler does hang on to this one. It'll be third down. Six rounder, and he's setting rookie rushing titles for, for the Washington Redskins. And everyone loves Robert Griffin, and, and rightly so. I, I think he is the rookie of the year with his excitement based on what I've seen through 13 games. But 
the guy who really sets the pace for him. It all comes off that running game, Chris, with Alfred Morris. Amazing win for the Redskins in overtime against Baltimore today to keep their playoff hopes alive. Two minutes remain here in Seattle. A 58-0 Seahawks advantage. Nowhere to hide in a game like this. On third down, Ryan Lindley. Michael Floyd. A couple of rookies connect for the Cardinals. And should be good enough for a first down. You know, it's like pointing out a smudge on the Mona Lisa, Tim, but the Seattle performance today, and bonus coverage of the Giants and Saints coming up, I guess if you want to look for something, the pass rush, they have a couple of sacks. Is that an area they want to improve uh, on? Definitely. Yeah, that's an area when you look at their rushers and, and what they're capable of doing and how good they are in coverage, that, that's got to get better. And it's been inconsistent all year long, the pass rush. There, there's no doubt about it. And Pete Carroll told us that exactly. We want to thank Mark Dalton of the Cardinals, Dave Pearson, Lane Gamble of the Seattle Seahawks, their media staffs for cooperating with us. Producer of today's game is Mike Burks, Mike Frank, our director, associate director Brian Biederman, broadcast associate Alex Strand from Seattle. Studio show produced by Bill Richards, directed by Bob Levy. Just a dominant performance, Chris, obviously a 51 to nothing, but in all categories, a historical win when you look at the numbers contrast in those points and the differential, but offense, defense with the turnovers, the running game on offense, knocking it out on special teams, scoring. Incredible. The 58 nothing total, should it end up that way, and it is a Cardinal first down, would be the most points scored, obviously. That's not going to change in Seattle Seahawks history, but the most lopsided shutout by the Seahawks in their history. Here's the question. Does Kenny Wisenhunt, the head coach of the Cardinals, and Pete Carroll of the Seattle Seahawks shake hands at the end of this game? I'll bet you they do. Now, Pete Carroll was shaking everybody's hand over there, the official, the ball there? boy, during the break. And I believe Kenny was on the Jets when Pete was there as a defensive yep. coach. They, they were together. And, and that's why uh, great respect for each other. I, I don't know if anything runs deep in terms of unless Pete was a we'll stay. We'll stay with you. Never, you never, never know through a handshake. But it was as if Seattle just wanted to keep their offense rolling. And of course points at a tiebreaker as you pointed out Tim at a division or wild card that does come into play. It's fourth or fifth down the line. Yeah and not to mention Matt Flynn a real opportunity to throw the football in, in a real game. His first opportunities this year. And give a rookie like Robert Turbin the football 20 times and this is the first time since 2005 that the Seahawks have had two running backs go over 100 yards in one game. It's as perfect as you want to draw it up if you're Pete Carroll. But at eight and five you got to keep it going when you go to Toronto to play the Bills and then home against the 49ers and Rams. Chris when do you want to play your best football everyone will tell you all the guys in the in the studio show there at Fox that have been in Super Bowl played Super Bowls they'll tell you it's December man you want to make your run you want to play your best ball. I can't think of two games in a row for Seattle where they've done that like they've done it over the last two weeks and now they put an explanation point on it with with Bruce Irvin getting the third sack of the day for the Seahawks his eighth sack leads all rookies in the NFL you talked about improving the pass rush and that's what they do and what a great story Bruce Irvin is at one time a teenage nomad who has said that he feels like he lived two lives got into trouble and football saved him and he owes football and people like Pete Carroll and John Schneider of the Seahawks for reaching out. What I love about that is he, he he got the sack going to the inside. I mean he's always been the guy that runs the edge. That time he took it up inside. He's, he's just so fast. I mean he's got corner cornerback speed for a defensive lineman unparalleled. Ten seconds remain. Eight takeaways by the Seattle team today. Russell Wilson his 20th touchdown pass. The rookie quarterback continues to lead the way. Marshawn Lynch over 100 yards and three touchdowns. Richard Sherman with an interception run back. One of two picks. He also had a fumble recovery. And rookie Bobby Wagner, team's leading tackler with a couple of interceptions as well. Everybody getting into the act for the Seahawks. And bonus coverage coming up of the Giants and the Saints. 52 to 27. Some points there being scored on a crazy Sunday around the NFL.
Division rivals in the NFC West. Pete Carroll, Ken Wisenhut. One and one against each other this year. And they'll meet again. For Tim Ryan, Jamie Maggio, I'm Chris Myers. Glad you're watching the NFL on Fox. Let's head to New York. Troy